wanted to open with a few announcements. There will be a congregational meeting after the service uh, today. That's the annual meeting. Uh, we will be uh, discussing building and putting new board members and fellowship team members in and, and looking at the pastor salary and all of the things of the normal uh, business meeting. Uh, we will not be voting on the building today, but we will be, um, Scott from the building committee will be sharing uh, quite a bit and answering questions and giving you the, the, the bid number and, and all of that uh, so you can get your questions ready for him. And then on March 28th, after the service, uh, we will have a formal vote on to accept the bid or to not accept the bid. Uh, there is a congregational dinner following the meeting, so if you stick it out through the meeting, uh, they have sandwiches and soup downstairs uh, for you, uh, so that's all ready to go. Um, youth tonight is from 6 to 8. Um, we'll be talking about the questions that are raised in Stranger Things in the Multiverse, uh, looking at the spiritual implications from those uh, two things, and so uh, uh, hopefully you can be here for that. Uh, also, this Wednesday, I will be picking up um, some food boxes. Uh, they're, I think they're called, uh, let me think of farmers, food from farmers. Uh, but we have 20 to 25 uh, packages of food that we will be picking up. So if you are in need of uh, some food or you know somebody, a family that, is, that could use some food, please let me know so that I can drop it off at their home uh, on Wednesday. Um, Family night is also this Wednesday. Uh, we're asking that you spend some time with your family. There's nothing planned here at the church but to uh, go and, and be with your family on Wednesday night. Uh, also, the Lenten service is on no at noon on this Wednesday at St. Charles Catholic Church. Uh, Bud Davis will be speaking. Um, and prayer breakfast is at Evermore's at 7 a.m. this Thursday. Men's prayer breakfast, and I will be speaking uh, at that. Uh, does anyone else have any other announcements this morning? Yes. Oh yeah, um, we are as a part of uh, Sunday more Easter morning at 9:30. We will not be having Sunday school. We will instead be having an Easter egg hunt and a, a continental breakfast uh, during the Sunday school hour that day. And so, if you can bring in the donation of candy to stuff into the eggs, because we've got like thousands of eggs down there that we're going to try to hide. Um, Please uh, bring that in um, over the next couple of weeks, and we'll get the, the eggs stuff, and we will have the Easter egg hunt uh, Easter morning. Anybody else have an announcement? Yes. Well, Amen. All right, well, let's open with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. Lord, we thank you for the ability to come into your house, Lord, and to worship you. Uh, Lord, we take that for granted so many times, and, and Lord, forgive us, but Lord, we, today... We come with thankful hearts, uh, wanting to lift you up and to praise your name. And so, Lord, would you meet with us here today? Uh, be with the service, be with the congregational meeting, be with the dinner. And, and Father, may we go home at knowing that we have been in the presence of the Lord today. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Let's stand and worship together.
may be seated. This time we'd like to ask the ushers to come forward for the morning times and offerings. Oh, I see the walk. 
good, amen. Amen. You may be seated. We're going to use this next song to get us ready to enter into a time of prayer. And so uh, worship along with us and get ready to enter into a time where we meet with the Lord. And I search the world.
John. I thank the Lord for the music you guys picked out this morning. Or the Lord told you to pick out this morning. Because it brought a great comfort to me. Uh, when it comes to medical things, I'm a lawyer. In 72 years, I've never been cut upon, never been in the hospital, except for one night, and that was known as stupidity. But uh, I'm thankful for the peace of that next time. Because the next few weeks, I've got some medical procedures and operations and stuff. So I, I, I just thank the Lord for this praise service today. Thank you for the worship. Amen. Uh, you remember, Dawn, she has some procedures coming up. Yes, Corey. Uh, That's what I was going to ask for next, so go ahead. Yes. Janice and Jean. 
none spoke or neglect you can just put up a hand today. And uh, let's take this to the Lord and then uh, um, we'll uh, anoint Maris after we're, we're done with the prayer. But, uh, Heavenly Father, we come to you and Lord, we do thank you. You are such a good God. And Lord, we thank you for commandments that have been studied in, in Sunday school, Lord. We, we thank you for the, the community and the church that came together for Donovan's birthday party, Lord. We thank you for the music and the worship you would bless this church with. And um, Lord, we also thank you for uh, clear MRIs and for uh, good results on, on ultrasounds. And, and, and Lord, we just uh, praise you for the simple fact that... Um, we had individuals that could hug their mom this week, and Lord, we just, we know what a blessing that is, and, and Lord, we, we just lift up and we thank you for when you give us peace in the midst of the storm, and for those who are able to get the vaccine, Lord, we say thank you for those things, and, and Lord, we just, we just, we love you with all of our hearts, and that's why we bring those who are, who are hurting and, and who need healing to you, and Lord, we think of, of Janice and Jean, Lord, we just pray that you would, uh, uh, just reach down and touch them now and bless them. Uh, and Father God, uh, we pray for Jerry as he goes in for eye surgery on Thursday. And, uh, for Randall Craig who goes in for heart surgery. And uh, Lord, we, we, we just uh, we pray for Dawn as he's going in for the procedures. And, and Tracy as she's going in for testing. And, and Donovan as he's going in to, to, for his uh, scoliosis and, and, and to be checked out. Lord, we just... Lord, we just ask that you would be with all of those who are needing a touch from you, who are needing answers to what's going on. And, and Father, we just uh, we just ask that you would uh, just be with them in these appointments and these procedures. Lord, we also just uh, want to bring uh, uh, Josh and Courtney Henry to you and ask your hand be on uh, their little one that was born premature. And Lord, we just lift that lift the baby up to you. And, and Lord, ask for you to do a, a mighty work. And for Maris, as she's going to get some some tests for uh, whatever is going on. Father God, we pray that you would take whatever it is that away that is going on in this little one. And Lord, we, we just pray for the Blaine Cribble family. Lord, as um, they lost a loved one. And Lord, we just ask for your peace and comfort. And for every hand that was raised, Lord, we ask for you to be at work and, and, and Lord, to do mighty things like only you can do on, on the behalf of each unspoken request that was made today. And Lord, it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen.
When you hear the name Jeff Foxworthy, what's the first thing that you think of? You might be a redneck. You might be a redneck. That's the first thing I, that, that pops into my mind, or his time on the Blue Collar Comedy Tour. Uh, that was a, a, a legendary comedy show. Um, there were the times that he was on TV, it seemed like every night he'd turn something on, and there was Jeff Foxworthy, uh, and he had a good run as the host of Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? How many of you watched that show? And, and Or maybe you had one of his comedy albums. After all, he is the greatest selling comedy album artist of all time, and it's not even really close. Uh, and he is an author of almost 30 books. So he's, he's a man of, of many talents. He's a man who has amassed quite a, quite a bit of wealth and, and, and he can be doing just about anything that he wants to be doing with his time. But what you might not associate with him is that he's a man of great faith. And he's a man of great generosity. Uh, and I just found this out about him. Even at the height of his fame, when he was traveling around doing comedy shows every weekend, every night of every weekend, do you know what he would do? He, Whatever city he was in, he would travel straight from the show back to the airport. He would hire a private jet to fly him home so that he could be there with his wife and daughters in the morning. Every morning. Now, can you imagine how much that cost over the years that he was on the road? But he's someone who is very generous with his money, with the people around him. And he's also a person who has been volunteering at a homeless shelter in downtown Atlanta, Georgia for the last 14 years. Every Tuesday morning, he goes and leads a Bible study. Here's a little bit about his story. You gotta watch this. I love these guys. You know, I, I learned uh, it's really to discard people or, or, or to not think about them when you can put them in a bucket and just call them homeless or addicts or whatever. But when they become Jack and Wayne and Kevin and Solomon, when they become real human beings, it's really hard to turn your back on them. And I think that's what I've learned from this place is is everybody in here is no different than I am. It's, it's people that got damaged early in life, and, and because of that, they had struggles, but they're loved no less by God than I am. And, and so it's kind of a cool thing to sit around in a, in a room full of men and actually talk about these things. And I was telling somebody the other day, you offered me a, a million bucks, but I had to give away my 10 years of commission. I wouldn't take the money because it's changed my life. It's made my life better. And, how do you put a price tag on that? So would you please welcome to the stage, my friend and yours, one of the funniest men in America, Jeff Foxworthy. It's a lot of pressure. Yeah, it's a lot of pressure. Wow. So thanks so much for doing this. My pleasure. Yeah. Yeah. This is amazing. Ten years ago. Um, someone that I don't think you even knew all that well invited you to do something you had no interest in at all. So tell us about how the whole involvement with the mission. I did a country started. countdown show for 10 years. We recorded it on Tuesday morning. It would air on the weekend. And so it got canceled. And I kept thinking, well, what am I going to do on Tuesdays? And we, we, I was with my girls at the Carter Center watching a documentary thing. And then they had to go to the bathroom. And whatever you girls do in the bathroom takes a lot longer than whatever those guys <laughs> in the bathroom do. So I'm um, killing time. And a guy had a table set up from the Atlanta Mission. And I took one of their brochures, and as I'm reading it, and I was like, oh, I didn't realize this was a faith-based thing. And the guy's name was Joshua Harrelson, and he said, hey, if you want to have lunch, I mean, wrote his number down. And I got home, I put it on the kitchen counter, and for months, I mean, two or three months, my wife would be like, can I throw this away? And I'm like, nah, don't throw that away yet. But it just sat there. Things came and went. And I finally called him, and he said, yeah, come down for lunch. And in my mind, I'm thinking, he wants something out of me. He wants me to do a, a, a show and donate the money, or he wants me to do their commercials. He wants something. And, and I asked him, I'm like, what do you want? And he said, I just want to have lunch. And so he invited me down. The first guy that I met at the mission, and, and, and this was my feeling about people that were homeless. I'm like, 
oh, there's somebody homeless, find a few bucks, and they'll go away. And I can go get with what I'm dealing with. The first guy I met was a, now we're in the middle of downtown Atlanta. It's this white 20 year old. This is your first trip down there? First trip down there, having lunch down in the cafeteria. 21 year old kid named Jason. And, I, and I'm looking at him, and to be honest, I'm like, get a job. You lazy, what the heck are you? You're 21 years old. What are you doing? And so we sit down, and Joshua says, hey, Jason, tell him your story. And Jason said, well, it was me and my brother and my mom and dad. And then when I was 11, my mom killed herself. He said, and then the next year, my brother killed himself. And then it was just me and my dad. And my second year of college, my dad killed himself. He said, and I just got tired of hurting. And so I just started getting high. And I'm looking at this kid and I'm thinking, I would have got high too. Oh, because when you get high or when you get drunk, you're not a good employee, so you, you don't work. Nobody wants to hire you. And so you don't have money. And so you start borrowing and taking from people around you. And that's how you end up on the street. It's some kind of hurt that you numb to. That's how you end up on the street. That's how you end up homeless. Something bad happened to you and you couldn't get past. So all of a sudden, instead of being nameless and faceless, this was a real guy with a real story that really, it, the story stung. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking at him and I'm going, I, I could be homeless. I could be you because I would have gotten high too. And so what was the ask? After a lot, I mean, there was an ask. Well, I, yeah, I went back two or three times. I kept thinking, what do you want? And I kept asking Joshua, what do you want? And he said, finally, he said, you keep asking what I want. I'll tell you what I want. I want you to lead a small group. He said, none of these guys have ever done a small group. A small group at the Atlanta Mission with homeless people. Yeah, do a little small group Bible study. And I'm thinking, there's six and a half million people in Atlanta, and you can't find anybody more qualified than me. <laughs> <laughs> really? And so that's how it began. It was me and 12 guys, and I had to even entice them. I would stop at Chick-fil-A and get chicken biscuits. I'm like, if you'll just come to a small group, I'll give you a chicken biscuit. And uh, so literally, you, when you get to Chick-fil-A on Tuesday mornings, they're not even open. I'll wait for them to open. I'm standing outside in the dark with so a little... So if you would ever like to get Jeff's autograph, if you'll go to the Chick-fil-A... <laughs> You have to get there at 6.15, yeah, right? 6.15, you got a good yeah, shot at that. Yeah. yeah. So you pick up, okay, keep going. And Sorry. so, and, and, and what was weird, it was almost divine. It's, it's, and I'm like, wow, this job is bigger than I am. So I had a group of guys that some of them I, I barely knew that I would text and go, hey, you want to come down here? One like my closest Some of your friends. Guys. Yeah, just associate with somebody who said, well, this guy's kind of going to work for, and I'm like, would you like to come down and... Almost to a man, every one of them said, I'll come down once, but Tuesdays are busy for me. I can't, I can't do it but once. Mm -hmm. And then 10 years later, they've been there every Tuesday for a decade. Wow. Um, and and I, I mean, I love these guys. These guys are just so all in. I know some of them are out here today. And so it's not my thing. All I did was say yes. That's all I did. I wasn't qualified. I just said yes. You know, oftentimes when we think of generosity, we think of somebody with more money than we have writing a check that's an amount more than we can 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 fathom, and 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 they use that money, and, and we say that's generous. But being generous is also buying Chick Fil A sandwiches for every person in the homeless shelter every Tuesday for going on 14 years. Being generous is giving of yourself to other people who are less fortunate than you are and serving them with your life. Being generous spills out into all areas of your life. It's not, it's not just a check that you write. It's not just an amount of money that you give. But it's giving of yourself and giving of your life. And it's not even something that's just for rich folk. It has to do with the condition of your heart. And it will show itself in how you spend your time, 
how you use your talents, what you write checks for, how you give your money, in the relationships that you have all around you. And we've been talking since the beginning of the year about how do we get to the next level in our faith? How do we, how do we take the next step? And, and, and this morning I want to take a closer look at the topic of generosity because I think it's such a big part of getting to the next step, the next level of our faith. And so if you have your Bible, I want you to turn with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 9. And we're going to be reading verses 1 through 15, or you can follow along on the screen. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 1 through 15. It says this. This is Paul writing. There is no need for me to write to you about the service to the Lord's people. For I know your eagerness to help. And I have been boasting about it to the Macedonians, telling them that since last year, you and Achaia were ready to give, and your enthusiasm has stirred most of them to action. But I am sending the brothers in order that our boasting about you in this matter should not prove hollow, but that you may be ready, as I said, you would be. For if any Macedonians come with me and find you unprepared, we not to say anything about you would be ashamed of having been so confident. So I thought it necessary to urge the brothers to visit you in advance and finish the arrangement for the generous gift you had promised. Then it will be ready as a generous gift, not as one grudgingly given. Remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to bless you abundantly so that in all things at all times, Having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. As it is written, they have freely scattered their gifts to the poor. Their righteousness endures forever. Now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for the food will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. And through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. This service that you perform is not only supplying the needs of the Lord people, but is also overflowing in many expressions of thanks to God. Because of the service by which you have proved yourself, others will praise God for the obedience that accompanies your confession of the gospel of Christ, and for your generosity in sharing with them and with everyone else. And in their prayers... For you, their hearts will go out to you because of the surpassing grace God has given you. Thanks be to God for this indescribable gift. This is a great story in the scriptures about a generous church, a generous people who were supportive of Paul and who gave everything that they had for Paul and his ministry. Because they realized something. If God has been generous to me, and he has been, then I need to be generous with the people around me. Amen. You know, God in turn wants us to be generous towards other people using the gifts that we have been given, using the talents we've been given, using the money that we've been given, using ourselves to be the witness to the generous heart of God. But before we take a closer look into this, let's ask the Lord to, to bless our time together this morning. Corey, could you open us with a word of prayer? Lord God, we just uh, gather here today and just open up your, uh, your word and just one of our ears and just also one of our hearts, Lord. We just thank you for telling all of us how we want to send our prayer, Lord, and just that we all can just say amen. Amen. Yeah. I, 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 as I was preparing this sermon, I was picking out words in this in this scripture that kind of stood out to me, or or I, I, some in some cases I didn't feel belonged together, and and in some places just said, 
wow, I don't usually associate that with giving and generosity, but the, that first word that I came across was enthusiastic. Generosity is an enthusiastic giving of yourself to others. Generosity is an enthusiastic giving of yourself, not your money. It's a giving of yourself to other people. You know, the, the Monday after snow camp um, is usually not a very productive day. Randy knows. Uh, even though we didn't have to, to go to New York, you know, even though we didn't have all of that rush, but it, Saturday was hard on this old man. It, 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 it was hard, and so the Monday after snow camp, I had the plan of, I am going to rest this body. Amen. That was all that was on the agenda. And so I got up, and I had exercised just a bit, and, and it was not rushed in any way. It was not even hard exercise. It was just getting the body moving, and, and, and I was just getting ready to, to lay down to think about a nap. And uh, the phone rang. And there was someone on the other end of the phone, and their first question was, Are you busy today? <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> I am not busy today. You know, there was a part of me that wanted to say yes, but no. The truth was, I am not busy today. And so the person asked me, If you're not busy, can you come and pick me up and give me a ride home? So everything within me wanted to make something up. But the truth was, I was not busy. The truth was, God had blessed me with a vehicle. In fact, we had two of them. The fact was, there was nothing getting in the way. And so I said, you know what? Yes, I will come and pick you up and I will give you a ride back to your house. And so... On that ride, I picked up the person. It gave us a nice chance to talk and, to, and to, to share. And I hadn't talked to this person for a few months. And it gave us a time to, to, to catch up and, and to, to understand what, to, what he was going through and, and how I could pray for him. And, and it was a good day. And it didn't cost me a cent. Except for in my time. In our relationships with other people, our default setting should be to be generous toward them. To be generous with them of our time. Because we serve a God who is generous to us, especially with his time. How many of you have ever gone to God and God says, not right now, I'm busy? Does that happen very often? It never happens. And so if we have that same heart that God has in us, we need to be generous with our time toward other people. Here's what it says in our scripture. It says, there's no need for me to write to you about the service to the Lord's people, for I know your eagerness to help, and I have been boasting about it to the Macedonians, telling them that since last year you and Achaia were ready to give, and your enthusiasm has stirred most of them to action. So the church that Paul was writing about here had one thing on their mind. How can we best serve the Lord's people? Even if they weren't in their particular church. In fact, this was so at the forefront of their minds that their motivations, uh, of their motivations, it actually showed itself in infectious enthusiasm. Meaning they didn't just show up to give the person a ride and say, get out of here. We gotta get home. They're like, hello, welcome. Step on into the vehicle. How was your day? An enthusiastic, infectious way about you comes through generosity. This church made sure that they put the needs of others first and foremost, even above their own wants, and that is what generosity does. It will allow you to put other people first, and it will cause you to want to do things for others without even thinking twice about it. You'll even lose the inner monologue. Yes, I'm busy. No, I'm not busy. Yes, I'm busy. No, tell them you're busy. No, you're not. 
You'll even lose that after a time. Generosity is an enthusiastic giving of yourself to others. The second word that stood out to me in the scripture is cheerful. Generosity is a cheerful giving of what you have for others. Generosity is a cheerful giving of what you have for others. You know, you all know what an oxymoron is, right? Don't point to your neighbor. But it's where you have two words that seemingly describe the, the polar opposite of something, but they, the, the words are used to describe something like the term jumbo shrimp. That's an oxymoron. How can it be jumbo and shrimp size at the same time? Or how about working vacation? You can't be on vacation if you're still working. Or here's the new one. We're alone together. Now you're either alone or you're together. There's no such thing as that. But do you know what else I thought at one point in my life was an oxymoron? Cheerful giver. Cheerful giver. You know, for the longest time, these words didn't make sense to me next to each other. And it didn't come to the, because of the fact that I didn't have much to my name for many, uh, a lot of my early childhood and, and teenage years and, and college days. It had more to do with the condition of my heart that held on too tightly to the things that I didn't have. After all, money is important, yes? It is. And I don't want to waste it. And I know that I'm supposed to give 10% of my income as a tithe, so I will write out that check for 10%. I won't write out that check for 10.1%. Right? I don't have to. And when it comes to my offerings on top of the tithe, I'm going to be ultra careful about how those, because I don't want to waste those, right? Right? But that's not how we're to live. Take a look at the words from our scripture, starting in verse 5. It says this. So I thought it necessary to urge the brothers to visit you in advance and finish the arrangements for the generous gift you had promised. Then it will be ready as a generous gift, not as one grudgingly given. Remember this. Whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously, each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. God doesn't need your money. He has the cattle on a thousand hilltops. He has everything that he needs. He doesn't need your money. But he does want your heart. And in order to get to your heart, he has to uncover some ugly things about it. And we have to let go of things that we hold on to so tightly, money included. Being a cheerful giver is an oxymoron when you are an unbeliever. It is an oxymoron when you don't let God take over your entire heart. But when you allow God to take over everything and you put his heart where your heart is, cheerful giver isn't an oxymoron. It's a lifestyle. Right. It's a requirement. Right. You know, God has placed important gifts, money included, in your life to bless others and yourself. It's not just for you. And here is God's economy. Whoever sows sparingly will reap sparingly. So if you only want to give a little bit, then God is okay with just giving a little bit back to you. And whoever sows generously will reap generously. Then here's what blew the lid off of my little theology that I had in college. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give. Not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. So if it's not even in your heart to give the 10%, you shouldn't even do that.
Then I got to realizing, am I okay with giving God nothing after what he has given me? He wants us to give, and he wants us to do it from a cheerful heart. And we can only do that if God has come in and rearranged everything that's in there. So we may, may need to check our hearts and the condition that it is in because generosity is a cheerful giving of what we have for other people. Next thing that I see from the scripture, the word that sticks out is abundant. Abundant. Generosity is an abundant giving, not of money. Generosity is an abundant giving of your good works towards other people. Generosity is an abundant giving of your good works to other people. Let's read in our scripture starting in verse 8. It says, And God is able to bless you abundantly. So that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. As it is written, they have freely scattered their gifts to the poor. Their righteousness endures forever. Well, I want you to look at your neighbor and, and, and tell them that God has created you for good works. And I want you to turn to your other neighbor and say, God has blessed you abundantly. <clears throat> so because God has blessed you abundantly and created you to do good works, you need to abundantly bless other people with the good works you were created to do. Our scripture goes so far as to say that we just need to freely scatter good gifts to the poor by doing good work after good work for them. Then we should put no limit on them. But we often get stingy with our good works for two reasons. The first is that I don't have enough time to do that right now. You're right. We all get the same 24 hours in a day. And so there may be have to, have to be a rearranging. I don't know if you caught this, but Jeff Foxworthy said that I did a, a radio show for, for uh, country music for 10 years. And it ended. And then I had nothing to do on Tuesday. You may have to end something, even something good, in order that you can serve other people with the good works that God has put in you. And you're going to have to make it a priority. Because if you don't have time in your schedule to do good works for the less fortunate, you need to create time. It's not just something that we can add on. It's, it's something that we have to change in our heart that looks for opportunities to do these good works before anything else. And the second reason we, don't, we get stingy with our good works is when we feel that someone's hogging all of our good works. And we don't see a change. And then we start feeling jaded and we stop acting good towards them and towards other people because I've done this good thing and I've done that good thing. And Lord, you're not changing them yet. But we can't let negative experiences stand in the way of our purpose. The other person may be only one good work away from changing their life. And we need to be focused on just giving those good works and giving those good works. And making our good works see the good work of Jesus Christ in us and through us. And lastly, generosity is a thankful giving to meet the needs of others. Let me read to you in verse 10. It says, Now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. And through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. So generosity leads to thanksgiving. This service that you perform is not only supplying the needs of the Lord's people, but is also overflowing in many expressions of thanks to God. 
You know, we talked about this uh, two weeks ago as it pertained to humility, but I want to make it clear as it pertains to generosity as well. If you're not thankful for the things that God has given you, you will not be generous with them. But we are promised, we are told here that we will be enriched and God will enlarge our harvest when we are thankful and generous at the same time. You know, I, I was thinking back to my time when I was, I was basically an intern doing college ministry. And as an intern doing college ministry, I was raking in like $85,000, $90,000 a year. And I think I got a stipend for $400 at the end of every two months or something like that. I did not have a ton of money. I was not wealthy, but I was rich in meat. My grandparents had a meat farm, and they kept my freezer fully stocked of steaks and roast and, and hamburg, and, and it was the best. And so I had a freezer full of beef for my grandparents, and so I was rich in steak. So what did we start doing? We started having Bible study over at our apartment, and we would cook steak every week. Because I had it, man. It was, it, that's what I had. And college students were like, yeah, I'll come out for steak. Because let me tell you, the school cafeteria was not serving steak. They barely served anything deep. And so people were lining up to come out. But that's what this looks like. If you have something that can meet someone else's needs and you can be thankful for what you have, that's what generosity is all about. Meeting the needs of other people with what you have. I want to close this morning just by showing you the end of, of this interaction between Jeff Foxworthy and Andy Standing, because I, I just think it's so powerful. Someone of that stature that will set aside the time, will set aside his talents, will set, set aside everything that he has to serve someone else. That's what generosity truly is. Let's take a look at the second story once um, where because you know there's they're homeless and they, they all have a story but they get accustomed to people doing things for them they come to the mission and they're fed they come to the mission they can get into a program so you decided that you were going to try to teach them this, this particular group you've been with for a while you have good relationships to be generous so you decide you're going to give them some money to can you tell that story? Is that too awkward? No, no, it's not too awkward. So, how many people have been wrong about something? <laughs> yeah, I've been wrong about, it. it's funny, when I look back at my life, most of the things that I, are, that I argued vehemently for or against 30 years ago, I yeah. totally changed my mind. Uh, so, the, the mission has a wonderful thing. It's called being in the program, and if you agree to get clean, if, you, if you'll get sober, they'll put you up for a year. They'll feed you every day. They'll put you up for a year, but we're going to go through, you know, emotional healing, spiritual healing, job attainment, you know, all, all kinds of things. They have to be in a small group with well, Jeff Foxworth. Yeah, well, <laughs> but it's like we want to restore, we don't want to just keep taking care of you because you're homeless. We want you not to be homeless. And so after about a year of doing um, the program, Jim Reese, who quit his job as CEO of a Fortune 100 company to run the Atlanta mission, just an amazing story. And so I said to Jim, I said, Jim, they need to bless somebody because we're providing every meal. We're providing the beds. We're providing the towels and the soap. They need to bless somebody. And I said, I want to give them all at Christmas a hundred bucks. And Jim's like, oh, no, I don't want people on the street buying Greg. No, don't give them a hundred bucks. And so... And, and I just, you know, I kept praying over this, and I said, I'm telling you, it's, it's going to be okay. I just feel like God's telling me it's going to be okay. So we ended up with 50 bucks. And so by this time, the 12 had grown into, you know, 250 guys on Tuesday morning. And so I went to the bank and got crisp $50 bills. And at the end of the thing, we gave every guy in the program a $50 bill. Gosh, you're jumping up going, I can get a bus ticket. I can go home for Christmas. I can buy my kids presents. I mean, they were high-fiving and so excited. And I said to them, I said, okay, that's your money. You do it whatever you want to. 
But three blocks away, there's a school that caught on fire last month, and it burned up all of their stuff. And I said, so they're really struggling without notebooks and paper and pencils and things like that. I said, I was just down at Children's Healthcare last week, and they told me that over the Christmas holidays, there will be 300 kids there on Christmas Day. And it's the coldest winter in, in 100 years in Atlanta. There's people sleeping under cardboard. So whatever you guys collectively want to donate into this basket in the middle of the room, we as group leaders have pledged to match you dollar for dollar. You know, the 15 group leaders will match you 250 guys dollar for dollar, and, and we'll go buy notebook paper, and we'll go buy hats and gloves, and we'll go buy toys for kids. 250 homeless addicts got up and went and put their $50 bill in the bucket. Every man in the room. And then they started digging through their pockets and pulling out $5 bills and $10 bills. And then they went back to their room and they got their change and started dumping it in there. And at that point, I got up and walked around the corner and, and sat against the wall and sobbed like I had not sobbed as an adult in my life. Because I'm like, man, I feel good about myself when I sit there and write a check for somebody, but I never gave every dime I had to somebody else. And so being wrong about somebody, when you look at somebody out on the street and you think, oh, they're just a bum or they're just a drug addict or that, it's like, no, they're a person. And they've got a heart maybe bigger than yours and that they're willing to give everything they've got to help somebody around. Well, I'm... Uh Here's the thing about generosity. It begets generosity. Yeah. So if you want to live in a generous world, if you want to live in a generous home, if you want to live in a generous church, be generous with the things God has given to you. Give of yourself. Give of your time. Give of your good works. Give of your money. Why? Because God has given us everything. There's not a single thing that I have in this life that God hasn't granted to me. That He hasn't allowed to give to me. And so that should spawn the generosity in us. Making us enthusiastic when it comes to giving. Making us cheerful. Making us give abundantly with thanksgiving towards God and toward others. Be generous, and you will be rich. Let's pray together. Lord, I thank you for your words. Lord, I thank you for the testimony of, of Jeff Foxworthy. And, and Lord, just I thank you that generosity never fails, never comes back void, Lord. And you have, are generous to us on all occasions. And so, Lord, you have called us to do the same with those who are around us. And, Father, I pray that we would seek to get to the next level of generosity in our Christian walk and in our lives, changing anything in our heart that needs to change and going after you. Father, help us to be givers of our time, of our talents, of our money, of our good works. And Lord, help us to do it enthusiastically, cheerfully, abundantly, and thankfully. It's in Jesus' name that I pray. And all God's people say, Amen. 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 Let's stand and worship together.
fear is crippling. You are true, you are true, even in my wandering. You are joy, you are joy, you're the reason that I say. You are life, you are life, and you death has lost the same. The more I'm running to your arms, I'm running to your arms, the riches of your love will always be enough. Nothing compares to your embrace, that of the world. Starting in just a couple of minutes up front here, and uh, you are dismissed if you need to go.